YouTube, how's it going? Frogs Angels is back with updated NFL Week 12 Power Rankings. I update this every single week. Each week, we also have plenty of different types of NFL prediction videos and Friday night live streams. A lot of good stuff happening at Frogs Angels, and it's thanks to all the supporters out there. Before we get into this Power Rankings video, go ahead and follow our Twitter, Frogs underscore Angels. There's also a link in the description. What I'm going to start doing every Tuesday... Uh, so as soon as this video is uploaded, the Power Rankings video uploaded every week, I'm going to tweet out my playoff predictions each round and then Super Bowl picks. It's not going to be based off the current seeding, just who I think will be in each seed of the playoffs and then predict it from there on out. And we're going to update that, update that every single week. So please check that out on our Twitter. I also tweet during live games, um, pretty much all the games, the noon games on Sunday. Um, you know, I'm tweeting nonstop, a lot of good stuff. So it's a good follow over there at Frogs underscore Angels. So it'd be much appreciated if you follow that. But let's get on to the power rankings. Uh, the bottom eights. The Cardinals moved down to the bottom because they lost to the Raiders. Really, 30 through 32. You can order that anyway, and I'm not going to argue with you. Uh, the Jets at 29. The Bucks coming off a loss to the Giants. They're at 28. The Jags are really struggling. Yeah, they played a good team in the Steelers, but that's a game they should have won. They dropped 27. You know, Look at all the teams you have down here. It's not too much of a shocker to see any of these teams down here. If you're talking beginning of the season, just really the Jags. You know, maybe maybe the Raiders weren't predicted to be down all the way down there. Maybe the Giants or the Bucks, maybe a little higher than that. But really the Jags is the one that sticks out. Giants move up pretty big after another win. Um, you know, are they going to blow it and start winning games? And, you know, the honestly... It'll be a shocker if they won that division, but it, it could happen. That That's pretty wild. You know, three games back, unfortunate injury with the, the Redskins. The Eagles are struggling. Uh, are the Cowboys really the best team in the division? Uh, yeah, I guess you can't count the Giants out, but that I guess would be a little surprising. Uh, moving on to the next eight. Oh, yeah, and Josh Allen's coming back for the Bills, so we do we see them rise up a little bit? We will see. Next eight. Browns at 24, they're a sneaky team. You know, they don't have a lot of wins. Record's not good, but I think they can pretty much beat anybody any week, honestly. You know, they're not better than a lot of teams in the NFL, but they're getting better, and they're a sneaky team. Eagles down at 23, disappointing season. Same with the Falcons, very disappointing season. Um, the Lions move up after a win. They need to stay more consistent. Broncos, big win against the Chargers. They go from 24 to 19. Um, from last week to this week, they have a talented team. Coaching's holding them back. You know, their record's not super great, and I think it's because of coaching. Uh, maybe the quarterback play, you know, hasn't been terrible, but it could be a little better. But Keenum, you know, I'm a believer in Keenum. He, he can make it happen, especially down the stretch. So watch out for this Broncos team to be sneaky. I like the talent they have. Um, I, I wanted to put them higher in this, honestly, but I couldn't quite put them over the next group of teams. Uh, 16 through 18 were pretty much a tiebreaker. Uh, and when it's like a tiebreaker, I go if there's any win streak, which none of these teams had, and then I go record. So the Packers coming in at 18. They're better than the 18th best team in football. Uh, but as of now, that's where they're at. The Titans, maybe the most inconsistent team in all of football. One week they look like a top 10 team. One week they look like a bottom 10 team. Uh, so what Titans team are we going to get this week? Mariota needs to play for them to have a chance. Moving on, next eight teams. Bengals at 16. They're on a bit of a losing streak here uh, besides the Bucks game. Uh, the Panthers, you know, losing streak as well. You know, I thought at one point, contender, uh, they're starting to fall down. You know, anybody can lose any Sunday, any given Sunday, uh, but a loss to the Lions does not look good. The Vikings fall down to 14. You know, a very talented team. You know, they may have one of the best rosters in football, but a couple reasons. The league changing a little bit, more of an offensive league. And I think coaching is really holding them back. And that's crazy to say. You know, I don't think Zimmer should go, but his game planning hasn't been good. I think they need him for the defense. But Filippo, one of the most overhyped coordinators, is just beyond disappointing. Beyond disappointing. So, And they're still talking him getting a head coaching job. I will laugh, laugh my ass off when that happens. 13, the Seahawks. Uh, you know, a team that could put up a fight against anybody. You know, they've had a pretty solid year so far. You know, a couple losses they would like to have back. Two against the Rams, really, who was one of the best teams in football. So they're a pretty solid team. The Cowboys move all the way up to 12. They're on a bit of a streak. You know, inconsistent team. They can lose and drop at any time, but they're feeling it right now. Redskins at 11. 
Um, you know, I can't move him. I can't move him down just because the quarterback got hurt and where we predict them to be. I think honestly, Colt McCoy can still make things happen. Uh, but right now, they're a solid team. Their defense creates turnovers. They're very good in the red zone. Um, they got Adrian Peterson still. You know, he's gonna have to do like he did in his early Vikings days and put the team on the back maybe a, a little bit because the quarterback injury. So we'll see if he makes it happen. Um, you know, the Redskins team is a likable team. Uh, we'll see what they'll be able to do. They can still win this division. Uh, 10, the Ravens. Lamar Jackson, will he can continue to start? I sure hope so against the Raiders. That makes so much sense to me that he that he plays in that game. I would be confused on why they would take him out. Uh, maybe if they play him in this game and a week later they take him out, um, it would be a little less confusing just because they can beat the Raiders. He can run all over the Raiders. Uh, good good developing game for him. The Colts soar up the rankings all the way. They, they kind of soared up last week, and they soared up again all the way up to nine. This team, this team's getting better and better each week. A scary team, and, and it makes sense, really. And I'm kind of, uh, what's the right word? I'm disappointed in myself a little bit because to not realize that what this team could do weeks ago. Because what did we think about the Colts going into the season? You know, we thought that we didn't have any doubts about their offense. Maybe Luck struggled to get back a little bit. No doubts about their offense. So we had doubts about their defense. Very young defense. But what we did know is they drafted good. What we do know is that rookies and young guys with the playing, with opportunity that they got, get better and better each week. So we see this defense getting better and better each week. We see Andrew Luck getting better and better each week. This all makes sense. It probably... It, it didn't make sense weeks ago, and people were blind to see it. I was blind. Uh, pretty good team. I'm not guaranteed they make a playoff spot or anything, but I like where this team's heading. Um, so yeah, that's really what I got to say about them. Uh, next few teams. Chargers still stay in the top eight. Really, it's because other teams were losing, and you know they're in record wise. It's not about record, but record wise, you have to take that in consideration. They're two games ahead of the teams behind them. So, I mean, things happen. You lose to a, a talented team in the Broncos division game, that happens, you know. They got to win that game. Rivers got to play better. I trust it. Uh, they're a good team. They got to play like it, but they're still at eight. Some people may be confused by that, but uh, there's a very good reason they're up there, and I just explained why. Seven is the Patriots. Uh, we would th like to think they would get things, or maybe not people that don't like the Patriots, but you would like to think they would figure things out now going forward. I think they will. Uh, six is the Texans. They're on a winning streak. You know, I, I actually had a team hopping them, uh, which could confuse some, but the Texans are on a winning streak. But I just don't think they're as good as the Bears. The Bears are playing outstanding football. I think they need a little better play out of the quarterback. But uh, Trubisky does really win games with his legs, and it's impressive to see. Not really just running uh, speed-wise, quickness-wise. Uh, the breaking tackles, the elusiveness, very impressive. But the rest of this team, the rest of this team is a contending team. Very impressive. They come in at five, uh, and then the next four. Steelers at four. I could not have, have them hop the Chiefs. The Chiefs, even though that loss to the Rams, are, are just that good. You know, Mahomes played a good game despite the turnovers. He's going to get better. He's going to control that. Young mistakes as the season goes on. Uh, and the defense, they got guys that step up, but the defense could be better. Um, you know, maybe some people expected the Steelers would hop them. I just couldn't do it. The Chiefs are that close to being undefeated with their two losses. The Patriots and the Rams are basically in the same fashion. It's unfortunate, but they're a very good team. The Steelers are also a very good team. You can flip those. I wouldn't really argue with you too much. The number one and number two, uh, if you have anything else, you're wrong pretty much. The, uh, the Saints are one. The Rams are two. Uh, it's, it's a fact. It's a lock. Best two teams in football. Do I think they're the best two teams in football throughout the playoffs? Maybe not. You'll have to find out on our Twitter. I will predict the seedings, each playoff round, NFC, AFC Championship, Super Bowl. I will predict that on the Twitter every week right as this video is uploaded. So you better follow us there. We appreciate the following on this YouTube channel. It's been great. Uh, this channel is it's going places, and it's thanks to you guys. Uh, but I don't know if I talked about the Saints and the Rams too much. Uh, the scoring's ridiculous. Um, that Rams system. You know, McVay's got a great playbook, great system, but he's starting to, at the end of games, the play calling is questionable, and it's almost like they're saving Gurley. They should be running the ball there. I don't even care if it's the Gurley. It should be the Gurley. I don't even care. Uh, but it seems like they're saving Gurley for the playoffs. I don't know if I really agree with that. I, I guess if you can win without using him, uh, it, it works out, but it's pretty risky. 
Uh, I like the receiver unit. You see Josh Reynolds step in. I don't know if it really ma- – you have to have receivers that can play and catch the ball, bottom line. But you can throw any receiver that follows the, those traits I just named and they'll be good in that Rams offense. And I think the same thing applies to the Saints, and it's not really because the offense. It's because really Drew Brees and the other weapons – that teams are scared of. Teams are scared of Michael Thomas, so Traquan Smith, who can play, not taking away anything away from him, gets open. Uh, Kamara, Ingram scares other teams. The play calling, you know, maybe the Rams playbook's better. Maybe the Chiefs playbook is better. The Bears playbook is better. But the play calling on the Saints and, and decision making is the best in football. And you see so many teams with great playbooks, but the play calling just isn't there and are hurting the team. There's so many teams you can say that. Um, and it's and you can say the opposite too. Maybe play calling is good, playbook is not. Maybe the playbook uh, not would fall under the Titans, the Cowboys. It's confusing that the, the, the going back to the Titans, they get the Rams offense corner, and he's not running that offense. He's not running that Rams offense that works so nicely. You know, and what a quarterback like Mariota could work wonders in that. There has to be a reason they're not running that offense. Maybe the receivers can't handle it. Um, it's a very fast paced offense. It's really not that hard. You just have to have a good memory, be in shape, and be ready to to think fast in a in a hurry not a hurry up offense but a fast offense. Maybe the receiver unit of the Titans are holding that back. It's very confusing. I know Mariota can play in it. Uh, a team like the Cowboys, the playbook starting to get better. Uh, play calling starting to get better. Uh, but you know you would th- you would think Dak in that offense will be better in a, maybe a, a Bears type of offense. You know. I think more teams need to start doing this. I feel bad for the teams that really over the years just built defense. My team uh, is a great example. The Vikings have a very talented roster. Zimmer wanted to build this defense to be one of the best. They are one of the best in the league still uh, in a shortage in defense, but it really doesn't matter because the league is changing. You know, I was thinking during the game that uh, last night, that Rams-Chiefs, I was thinking it was a Texas Tech versus Cal. Literally was thinking that, and at the, at the end of the game, Goff said that. And that's what it's like. That's literally what it's like in today's NFL. And it's people say it's exciting for football. It is fun, but those people that say that are, you know, they're kind of the, those football fans that don't really have a specific team. I think 90% or more of football fans have a team. They're a big fan of a team. And, you know, for and to know that you have no shot because you can't score that way, even though your defense is good, it just kind of sucks. It, it really does. It's it's un, it's unfortunate. But football, it's very exciting. Definitely exciting, especially that game last night. But these are my power rankings. I update them every single week. Let me know your thoughts. Feel free to uh, give me your power rankings if you want to do top 10, top 8 in, in the comments down there. There's some question, There's some arguments to be made, maybe the 3-4 range, the 5-6. You know, Chargers coming off a bad, somewhat of a bad loss. Maybe people wanted to see them drop a little more. I did not do it. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to follow our Twitter Right after this is uploaded, I'm predicting all kinds of stuff, and I'll update that every single week. Should be a lot of fun, and we'll keep keep continuing to do our normal scheduled videos and more here on Frogs Angels. 10K is our subscriber goal. Please click that button. That'd be much appreciated. Clicking the like button would also be much, much appreciated. That's going to do it, though. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. Goodbye.